This demonstration shows virtual creatures that were evolved to perform specific tasks in simulated physical environments. Swimming speed was used to determine survival. Most of the creatures are results from independent evolutions. Some develop strategies similar to those in real life. Once they're evolved, multiple copies of these creatures can be made and simulated together in the same environment. The next group of creatures were evolved for their ability to move on a simulated land environment with gravity and friction. Some simple solutions with just two parts were found. Some seemed like they could use some assistance, while others were fairly efficient, such as this rowing-like behavior. Here is an odd cousin of the previous. A mutation caused him to tumble. Some creatures evolved to incorporate contact sensors in their control systems. Here is another inchworm-like creature that tends to go in circles. This was actually a creature first evolved for its ability to swim in water, then later put on land and evolved further. A successful sidewinding ability resulted. Here is one with a hopping style. The protrusions on its arms seemed to help prevent it from tipping over. This was the fastest, with a successful galloping-like stride. This group was evolved for their jumping ability. This group was evolved for their ability to adaptively follow a red light source. The resulting creatures are now being interacted with. A user is moving the light source around as the creature behaves. This one seems to flail randomly, but somehow still manages to approach the light. Perhaps it is mean to move the goal away just as it arrives. Here is one that has propeller-like fins which are tilted depending on the direction of the light. It can adaptively swim up or down very well. This final group of creatures was evolved for their ability to compete for control of a green cube. The creature closest to the cube at the end of a simulation is the winner. Here, a strategy first arose for simply tumbling towards the cube. Then one learned to block out his opponent. But then later, one learned to overcome the obstacle by climbing over it. Some pinned down their opponents. Some covered the cube with protective arms. Others simply unfolded onto the cube. The success of a strategy is often highly dependent on the opponent. Here is a hockey-playing creature, which takes the cube away and wins by a large margin. Here are two similar hockey strategies battling it out with appropriate gestures. This crab-like creature walks well, but often continues past the cube and instead seems to prefer beating up on his opponent. Against the arm, the crab seems to simply walk away. A successful strategy is this two-arm technique that swipes quickly in from the side and moves the cube over to a second arm. These are the final rounds of competition amongst the overall best. Finally, the seeker arm goes against the side swiper, but the cube is just out of reach. 